Okay, so when I went wheeling the other day, two things happened. The shifter linkage for the four-wheel drive thing broke, and this sucker was overheating like crazy when you're going up a hill or doing anything aggressive. So first thing I want to do, I'm going to flush the fluid. A lot of people have been asking me for that video anyway, so maybe you'll learn something there. Um, also, I want to flush it because uh, I had to put a bunch of water in there, and... The water was full of chicken. It's a long story, but uh, yeah, so there's chicken water in there. See that? Chicken water. Every time. Oh, that's horrible. Oh. Chicken water antifreeze. So if you're not aware, chicken water antifreeze is bad for you and the environment. So you want to try to catch as much of this stuff as possible until it starts running clear when we're doing the flush. So anything that's green, catch it and recycle it or whatever they do with that stuff. And don't let your dog drink it. It tastes kind of like Kool-Aid. It's really sweet. I know from experience. Alright, so to make your radiator drain faster, you can take out that petcock and it'll come out of this big hole instead of this little tiny one. Uh, so there's four different places that the coolant can go. There is the radiator, uh, there is the engine block, there's the reservoir, and then there's your heater core. Now your heater core is inside and that's uh, what the air passes by to heat your vehicle. Uh, like in the winter time when you turn the heat on. So we need to flush out those four components. Um, I've already kind of done the radiator a little bit and then uh, we'll do this next here. So the reservoir connects right here. I'm just going to take that loose and kind of get it lower. Make sure it's going into your bucket down there. And then I'm going to flush out the reservoir. I'll do the radiator again. Make sure that's running clear down there. Looking pretty good. That was all brown nasty in there. Okay, so the radiator has been flushed. The reservoir has been flushed. There's two things left, the engine block and the heater core. So the uh, thermostat is really hard to get to in there. Sometimes you can take the thermostat out and uh, flush it through the one of the radiator hoses. Um, the problem is if you take the top radiator hose off, any flush that you has to do, have to do goes through the thermostat, which is closed right now because it's cold. So what I'm going to do is take off the lines here that go to the heater core. I'll flush the heater core this way and the engine this way. And you can see on the other side, here's the other line to the heater core right here. The lines to the heater core bypass the thermostat because you want heat all the time so we don't have to worry about the thermostat being closed for that. I 
go. Awesome. Alright, so now that we've got that loose, we can flush the heater core. And typically the heater core runs into the water pump. And when you flush the heater core, you want to flush it backwards because if there's any debris that's got stuck in there, you want to push it back out the way it came instead of forcing it further in. Now the last thing to flush is going to be the engine block and the best way to do that in my opinion is to take off the lower radiator hose so that's right there and you can either take it off of the water pump or the radiator. I think the radiator is going to be easier for me. So since the thermostat is still in the vehicle, we can't really flush through the upper radiator hose. So what I'm going to do is just use this hose here that we disconnected for the heater core on this end. I'm going to go in the opposite end to flush the engine block. Now when that water is running perfectly clear, you know that uh, it's completely flushed out. There's no antifreeze left in the system and we're good to move on. Alright guys, now the entire system is flushed. There's no antifreeze left. Everything, all the mud, slush, dirt, debris is flushed out. Now I should mention there are other ways of doing this. Instead of opening everything up, you could just drain your radiator, pour distilled water in there, and then uh, run it, and then drain the radiator again. There's another method on YouTube that does this, but basically what you're doing is just diluting everything and then trying to drain it all out through the radiator. But it really doesn't flush the entire system. That's why I like to do it this way. Make sure that all that sludge is out of every single component. Now there's one thing left to do, uh, when we fill this back up with 50-50 antifreeze mix, we want to make sure that it's a 50-50 mix, and right now we've got a lot of water still in the system, so what I like to do is blow it out with air and get as much water out as possible. So everything is still open, I'm just going to shoot air into here for the heater core, I'm going to shoot air into here for the engine block, into here for the radiator and end here for the reservoir and that should push out most or all of the water. Here's a little quick tip for you. If you've noticed, I've been doing this all downhill and off camber towards the petcock. And it's not a necessity, but it just makes everything easier. So all the water and stuff will want to drain out the petcock and downhill towards the front of the engine. All right, now I'm going to put everything back, including this hose over here. I'm going to put this hose back on the radiator. 
I'm going to leave this one open for right now. You've got to be real careful right now because your entire system is full of air and it's real easy to get air trapped in the system. So what we want to do is fill up the engine block with coolant, fill up the radiator, fill up the reservoir and try to leave some of these things open so that you can push out as much air as possible. Then we're going to run it and let, a, let that circulate turn on the heater core, turn on the heat inside your vehicle so that uh, the fluid will go in there and that doesn't get uh, air trapped in it. We can also help that by putting coolant in this tube over here which goes towards the heater core. So everywhere that there's air you want to try to fill that up with coolant and that'll just help get all the air out of your system faster. And make sure to put the pet cock back on the radiator before you start. All right, so I like to use the concentrate. The 50-50 mix saves time, but it's really a waste of money because you're paying for water. Um, so I'm gonna use a gallon of this. I know it's gonna take more than two gallons, so I'm not gonna pre-mix it. Normally I would pre-mix it, but it's gonna take more than two gallons. And then I'm gonna put distilled water in as the uh, other half. So first we're going into the engine block here. And the reason you want to use distilled water is because it's pure water. It doesn't have any calcium or added ingredients that could solidify and ruin your system. Alright, I can start to see it filling up in the radiator here, so that's good. So now I'll go ahead and pre-mix for the rest. I've got an empty gallon here, a full gallon here, and a full gallon here. I'll just do half the water in here, half the antifreeze, and then pour the rest of the water in here. Now just make sure to mark that as mix so you don't forget. Alright, so I went ahead and put the radiator cap back on so it doesn't come out of there. And I went ahead and took off the other side of the heater core because otherwise it won't want to fill because it's pressurized with air. Once it starts spilling out over there, then I'll stop the flow here and connect it back up. And for the reservoir, I'll go ahead and fill it up to the full mark. Now everything should be full and there should be very little air in the system. But what I want to do is take the radiator cap off, turn the vehicle on, see if the water pump sucks any of that down. If it does, I'll add more fluid. I also want to put the radiator cap back on go for a test drive, get it up to operating temperature, come back, let it cool down, and then check it again just to make sure. If there's any air in the system, it'll suck this through to replace that air and you'll need to add more coolant. Now I also should mention, never ever take this radiator cap off when the engine is hot. Make sure this is cool to the touch. If you take this off when it's hot, it's gonna spew out and burn the crap out of you. Okay, I took it for a test drive for about 30 minutes. The temp stayed great right at 210. I've let it cool off, so it's nice and cool now. And I'm just gonna open it up, check to see if I need to add any more fluid. Looks good here at the radiator. Over here though on the reservoir, you can see the level has dropped a little bit, so I'm just gonna top that off and then we'll be done.
Hey guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you got any information out of this video. Make sure to check out our Patreon page. There you can help us help you. We make three videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I appreciate it. We'll see you next time.